Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in. I'm excited to have our, our first guest, Clayton Thomas Miller, to our show, um, Truth, Health, Family, and Culture. Um, I, I picked that. That's, that's like, I, I'm familiar with uh, um, the Stella that Clayton praised and the medicine that they use and of the four directions and, and, the, and the physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, but that is our four points of the longhouse. Uh, truth, family, health, and culture. That's our law. And excited with um with what Tislewatith Nation has done to incorporate these values into, into everything that we do, from economic development to housing to social development. And of course, what the department I work in and manage is one of the managers is Sacred Trust, which is the initiative to stop the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline. We created um, a 1,200 page assessment. We did a spill analysis, we did a clean analysis, we did an economic study, we just finished an air quality study. And not only that, but we enhanced what we have. Our salmon count for our main river went down to 6,000. We brought it up to millions in 10 years. We reintroduced elk into our traditional territory, which brought back bears and grizzly bears, wolves, you know, even sort of completing that ecosystem. And the same with the, the, the clam harvest that we've done two years ago it was the first time in 40 years that you know the second biggest busiest port in in North America with all the pollution that is left there we cleaned it to the degree to the first time in 40 years we did a clam harvest so sacred trust is and to slay with the nation we 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 believe in protecting what we love and that's one of our laws truth family health and culture all revolves around those laws and all the guests and all the people that are you're going to see in the next six months and there's that's the first part of it is the first six months and then um, there's a lot of guests that we did include in the, in, the, in, the, in the poster that went out, the first initial poster with all our 28 guests. There's another 28 guests that are wanting to come aboard. Um, I, you know, Auntie Pua and Hawaii and Melina, David Suzuki, much, much more that, you know, that we like to bring on, but also spiritual leaders from around the world. Uh, Marcos, who you remember, Clayton down in, in Brazil, um, the, the, the Grand Chief of the Amazonian people. He will be one of our guests in the, in the second half of, of this. And um, my name is Ruben George. I'm of the Tislewatooth Nation. And my, my mom's Tislewatooth, my dad's Squamish. And they're both um, two of the three nations that surround Vancouver, BC, on the West Coast. So um, that's just a little bit about what we do and, and, and what I do. And, and I'm happy to say that those cultural and spiritual values that, that we have, we incorporate into, into as much as we can as much as we can and, and the values that we work with are so important, are so important and, and, and you know, and we're, we're protectors of our lands and our waters and our people and our rights and our ceremonies. Those are all very, very important things and, and the people that come on the show have the same values. And, and so I, I, have, I have two friends that have been working on this with me and that's Christine, she's um, of um, Secret Ecology and uh, as, as well as much other things. And I'm just gonna give her some time to introduce and she's gonna be managing what's going on here today. And just another thing too is um, we're streaming out to about 40 different sites, international sites all over the world. So we're, we're excited to do this launch and um, yeah, I think things are good. So Christine. Cool, um, hi everyone. My name's Christine Peterson. Um, I'm the founder and director of Sacred Ecology which is a feature length documentary film project, a production company, an online publication about the importance of cultural and biodiversity preservation. Uh, over the past five years, we have been interviewing and uplifting the voices of indigenous elders, cultural leaders, seed savers, permaculture educators, and ecology experts from all around the world. Uh, our mission is to educate people about the importance of earth-based ancestral traditions, indigenous rights, regener regenerative organic agriculture, biodiversity preservation, and environmental conservation. Uh, our ultimate goal is to inspire and educate people to live more sustainably by reconnecting with nature in sacred ways. Uh, Ruben and I, we met uh, about a little over a year ago up in Vancouver, Canada, and we decided to join forces and I wanted to help him get his message out there um, by hosting this live stream series with him, 
where once a week we will be interviewing a bunch of indigenous leaders from around North America who have been specifically working in, in environmental conservation. Uh, so this is the first one. It's our very first live stream. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to write comments in the live stream chat um, on Facebook. And for those of us who are joining us on Zoom, you can put those questions in the chat as well. And we will try to ask those questions to Clayton and Ruben uh, near the end. And that's about it. Back to you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, in Vancouver here, we work with, and Washington State, and some in Alberta, for, for the regionally, we work with over 80 different, more than, of course, 80 different NGOs and First Nations that are opposing the TMX pipeline. Um, and Wilderness Committee was the first group that we worked with through Ben West. And we always kept that relationship going. And, and uh, now we have our bro, Peter McCarthy, who's, who's working with the Wilderness Committee, is gonna tell us a little bit about what they do and maybe some little updates on Kinder Morgan and who, what, when, and where, and how we could stop the thing. All right, Peter. Thanks, Ruben. And yeah, you know, I'm just so honored uh, to be a part of this project with you. I'm excited to um, hear and share the, the learnings that uh, our incredible lineup of guests has coming. Uh, as you mentioned, I work for the Wilderness Committee. We're here based in Vancouver uh, on Musqueam, Slavita, and Squamish territories. And we work through a combination of grassroots research um, and sort of education to protect wilderness and wildlife in what's now known as Canada. And uh, one of the campaigns we've been doing that for um, over 10 years now is on the Trans Mountain campaign. Uh, you know, we started with the George family, um, you know, I think in 2010, uh, you know, when the, the current pipeline was the biggest threat facing the Salish Sea and the, uh, the expansion of oil traffic through it. Um, and then in 2012, the uh, expansion was proposed and, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a long haul with it. And, and now Trans Mountain is, uh, we've had a lot of victories on the way, but Trans Mountain is under construction um, along the pipeline route, kind of just getting started this spring. So we're out monitoring um, to see what's going on and, and make sure that folks are paying attention. So, um, you know, stay tuned to the Wilderness Committee's social media channels on Facebook and Twitter and uh, the website to see what's going on. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit of an update on uh, the, the pipeline progress and protests that are coming against it um, every week. And so, uh, you know, we just had on, on Saturday some members of, uh, well, affiliates of the Braided Warriors and the Tiny House Warriors uh, were locked down to some equipment in, in Blue River. Um, and uh, we've got, you know, hummingbird nests in Burnaby here, the Brunette River Conservation Area, where some local folks on the ground have scouted out hummingbird nests, which Trans Mountain is not allowed to destroy um, during their nesting season. And that those little, little teeny land defenders have uh, stalled the cutting of trees from within about 50 meters of, of their nests. Um, and then the, uh, the last piece I wanted to mention today as well as, you know, they, they want to drill into the Fraser River. And for those who don't know, you know, the Fraser River is the most important salmon river in the world. Um, it has massive value to Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities that live all along it. And uh, they're getting prep prepared right now to drill right underneath it uh, using a method called horizontal directional drilling. They pump this toxic mud underneath and if that uh, if they have what's called a blowout that mud can get into the river and so they're uh, they're clearing for that work right now but the good news is uh, you know they thought they would be able to start that work at the start of April and they're already at least six weeks delayed um, and so if we can keep that up you know for every two weeks that they work we delay, delay them another six weeks uh, I think we'll be in good shape so um, that's all I have to say for now. And uh, I'll throw it back to Ruben and, and our wonderful guest, Clayton Thomas Mueller. Yeah, and just a quick update for Tisla, which is Nation's Sacred Trust. We're, we're, we're looking at still legal avenues that we could take. And um, we're, we have to take them back to the people. But one thing that we're looking at really close, and this, this might interest you, Clayton, is, is the United Nations. 
as you know, is when we exhaust all, all of our legal avenues within this country, we, we, we could apply to the United Nations court, the international court. So that's what we're looking at really close. And um, so we're probably looking at building allies. And I, I think that's a conversation that you can, you and I could have after um, we, we talk here. And, and, um, and, and much like what you said, Peter, there's, 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 we deal 500 referrals a year to Slavic Nation of anybody that wants to build in our traditional territory. They need a Tisleweetooth Nation permit. So we do that to them too. We make sure that they get their permit. And you know, it's so brutal how when we work with any level of government and, and any progress that we want to make forward, we're always stalled, especially if they don't like it. They always stall it. Even in economic development, they stall it. And the government is, is a headache around that. So we work, we, when they want something, we, it's, 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 it's expected that we're gonna work like them too. We don't stall it, but we work at our pace to make sure we, we are thorough in what we do. <laughs> and we take our time to make sure we're thorough in what we do. So anyway, um, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for everybody tuning in. Um, I really appreciate this time. And, and you know, um, it's, it's, it's so important to protect what we love. Uh, you know, Clayton makes me think of, um, when you, when you came out on the water with us and the, and the, and the connection that you grew when you were younger, when you're living on the West coast and, and you always bring up my grandfather and, and the centennial speech and the prayers and the things and, and have an opportunity to, you explained so beautifully when you, when you came out on the water and you're in, and you're connected to, to slay with it. And, and in particular, my grandfather, chief Dan George and, and, um, and of course, my mom's really close to you. And as, as well as you certainly recognize some of the people that are tuning in here, know, know the good work that you do. And so I, I think of that when I think of you. And, and some things that I know about you that, that not many people know is that you are a ceremonial person. And um, you do great work. And, and you, know, you know the struggle. And, and one thing I admire about you, bro, is your longevity. From when we had that first meeting, for Kinder Morgan, like Peter was saying 11 years ago, I'm the only one left. And I swear, you know, people are really close to me. I say, you know, I'm, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I'm too tired. And, um, but that's what I admire about you is, is your longevity and, and you know, and, and, but I think what I'd like to get into a little bit more today too is, 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 is I'm gonna prod some questions towards you about you know, some pretty influential people you met. I, I, I remember when, when, when the first words that you, when you're talking to Trudeau in a town hall, you said, you're really good, aren't you? You're just good at this. <laughs> I remember that. And, but I remember you getting arrested. And I remember um, they're pretty rough on you. Some people they just grabbed and they, you know, they just took care of them. But you know, when they grabbed you, they're pretty rough with you. And you know, the, and, and then the international travel and the international work that you have done, you know, those are type of some of the things that I'd like to jump into because, you know, I'd, and, and some of the famous people that you had candid conversations with about, about the pipeline and, and the shoulders that you got to rub with, of, with international leaders and international actors and performers. And, you know, those, those are little bit stories I think that I know you don't talk about, but I'm gonna ask to talk about today. So um, Clayton's a good brother. You know, has his, 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 um, done a lot of work regionally, nationally, internationally. You know, we, we travel together in um, Brazil and, and, and in Paris and, and all over different places. And, you, and whenever, when we need you here, you come. It's just a phone call. Just a phone call and you're here. So all the great work that you do and, and I'm, I'm happy you're home, you know, um, and happy your home that you you could really connect to your lands and your waters and your people and you know and your your family and you know it's good for your kids too to to be home with their their cousins so I'm, I'm really happy for that too so Clayton I'm gonna ask you to take some time and explain a little bit about who you are then we'll jump into some questions okay sounds good holy I'm just all bashful now after uh such kind words bro I I, I uh I'm a big admirer of you as well. And, uh, you know, I really respect you, uh, not just as an activist and a voice for your nation, but, you know, as a father, you know, I've had the chance to 
to encounter you with with your your daughter and your son and uh their mother and their that side of the extended family down in uh uh is it Lummi or Talela uh, Talela forgive me yeah and uh it, it, you know it's it's just a, it's just a great honor to be able to um support you know Ruben talks about the connection um that I like so many others have to Tisleva Tooth and the inlet and uh in particular you know um his grandfather Chief Dan George and you know you know Chief Dan George is is kind of like 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 a Malcolm X or a Rosa Parks or like a like a Nina Simone or like a uh, 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 Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King um, for First Nations up here, you know, and when I was growing up, there were three civil rights activists that my mom would, you know, take a lot of time to make sure I knew they existed. And, um, you know, I had, a, I had a chief, a, post, a poster of Chief Dan George, I remember when I was a little kid with his his famous speech on there. And, um, you know, I, I never real, I never even could imagine that I would be working, um, you know, with his daughter and and uh, her children um, to fight this pipeline, you know, three decades, four decades later. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a great honor. And, um, you know, I think now more than ever, we need as many people, um, you know, joining in this movement for massive economic transformation that's uh, ecologically designed, and, you know, you know um, bioregionally designed um, that is, you know, lifting up indigenous peoples at the forefront in leadership in terms of how we take care of the places where creator put us. And, you know, I've had the benefit uh, for the last 20 years, um, you know, to work with our people to stop the encroachment of the fossil fuel industry into our traditional homelands. Um, and that included, you know, much work from the North Slope of Alaska all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and, you know, across Mother Earth um, supporting you know, through amazing organizations and institutions, uh, social movement networks, such as Indigenous Environmental Network, um, Idle No More, um, International Indian Treaty Council. Uh, you know, there's so many incredible organizations uh, and now Indigenous Climate Action here in, 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 in these lands that they call Canada. Um, and I currently, uh, you know, work for an organization called 350.org. Um, our team here in Canada is focused on stopping the expansion of the Alberta tar sands and its associated energy infrastructure, like the TMX pipeline. Um, and uh, you know, a big focus of our work is in building uh, what many are referring to as a green new deal for Canada. But essentially, you know, what we're investing in is uh, is 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 massive. Hey, Clayton, you cut out for a minute. Hey, bro, you're cutting out. Mother Earth, um, you know, since probably post World hey, Clayton, War II. You, you, um, you, you now. Cut, am, I, am I here now? <laughs> yeah, you cut uh, out for is a minute. This How about this? Yeah. Good to go? I think you're frozen, though. You are frozen. Can you hear me now? Yeah. We're like one of those commercials. Oh, okay. Hold on. Is that better? Is that better? I hear a little static. Are we good? Yeah, I think we're good, but there's little static. Hello? Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, sorry me? about that. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, just can't see you. Oh, there you are. Now we can hear you and see you. <laughs> okay, good. We're good. Can you hear us? Clay. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, there darn you internet, eh? Since we have these technical challenges. Yeah. But uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. So we have Clayton Thomas Miller. You know, um, we're live broadcasting around the world. We have um, 40 different sites that are tuning in and live streaming out for us. Um, it's coming out of Sacred Ecology on Facebook, but then sacredecology.com as well. Okay, Clay, you there? Okay, a little more technical difficulties. And so just let me know when, when um, 
when you got a fixed clay and you're frozen and I can't hear you. But um, Secret Ecology and, and the Wilderness Committee are, are also our partners yeah, and we're doing a Sacred Trust. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, we lost them completely. So Hopefully rejoining. Yeah, yeah. Maybe finding a better area. So thank you all, Tiwish Kapei, for joining in. Thank you all. I could see you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we we also teamed up with um Phil Lane and, and his 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 group and and um and then a lot of allies all throughout throughout um, a lot of lot that we work with. I didn't get to them all, but um, I know we, I had a contact with um, um, Greenpeace, Stand, um, Sierra Club, of course the Wilderness Committee, Sacred Ecology. So a lot of our allies are, are also helping out spread the word of, to tune into Sacred Ecology. And um, who we have is Clayton Thomas Mueller and is having some technical difficulties. So just stay tuned and, and we'll, we'll get right at it when, right away when we can and um yeah good. for those who don't i mean the trans mountain pipeline fight is um really a continental effort you know ruben's been a huge part of bringing people into this fight from uh you know ganawake all the way down to tulalip and um coast to coast and so for those who don't know about the trans mountain pipeline uh you know, if you're just if you're just tuning into the fight now, it's it's had a long history, but uh, it's an expansion of an existing pipeline. Um, but they want to put a brand new one right next to it, uh, six hundred thousand barrels of oil a day moving right across um, from Ruben's territory, and uh, and right across from his community. Even looks like we got clay back. So. So thanks, Peter. So Clay, where, where we lost you, you're, you're starting to talk about the, the two jobs that you have with 350.org and you didn't bring up mm -hmm. Bioneers yet, but um, go ahead, Clay. Yeah, sorry about the technical difficulties there. I don't know what the heck happened, but uh, yeah. So, you know, bonjour, danse, zongibane, siyanane, tishnakas, kanuto tem. My name is Clayton Thomas Mueller. I'm super honored to be here. Uh, I think I I gave some accolades to Ruben for those of you that are just tuning in a little bit earlier uh, and, and, and uh, Sacred Ecology and Peter for having me here today. Um, I'm from Pugatawagan Cree Nation. Uh, it's in uh, northern Manitoba. Um, it's the furthest eastern Treaty 6 First Nation. And um, yeah, but I live here in, in uh, Winnipeg in Treaty 1 territory, home of the Métis Nation, the Anishinaabe and uh, the Dakota peoples. And um, yeah, Winnipeg is like the biggest urban reserve in the world. Uh, it's commonly referred to. It's a, it's a big niche town. And uh, yeah, I really love living here. And I'm raising two beautiful sons here with their mother. Uh, we're not together anymore, but we're still very, very close. And uh, um, I have a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old named Felix and Jackson. And you can see them in a documentary on City TV that just uh, dropped uh, just this week. And um, you can find the link to that documentary in my social media. So check that out and you'll see my, my little bears, as I like to call them. Um, but yeah, no, I, I wear a lot of hats in, in the movement. Uh, as Ruben had mentioned at the beginning of the call, you know, we met each other just over a decade ago uh, when Tisleiwetooth decided to step up and, and, and assert their sovereignty, uh, title and jurisdiction uh, against this proposal for a mega pipeline to be built uh, to ship crude and unlock Canada's controversial tar sands um, to Asian markets uh, directly through um, not just to Tsleil-Waututh's territory, but you know many, many different First Nations, uh, including Skokwepmuk in the in the interior. Um, you know groups like Tiny House Warriors and uh, uh, of course Sacred Trust, and you know many, many different uh, uh, representatives from the uh, the environmental non governmental uh, you know organizations sector, you know, the, you know, environmental movement and whatnot, have all joined uh, in the call to, to stop this pipeline, you know, it was originally Kinder Morgan, Houston Energy Giants uh, proposed project, uh, and they were the original owners of the old pipeline that Peter was referring to. But, um, you know, we, we kicked their butts, we won that campaign, we shut that pipeline down. 
And, uh, you know, we sent Kinder Morgan, you know, super evil energy giant back to Texas with their tail between their legs. And, um, you know, it was the power of prayer and, and the power of the connection of not just indigenous peoples, but everybody in the lower mainland and interior of BC um, that is that people share with the land there. And, um, you know, uh, um, and yeah, we won that fight. Um, but then, you know, Prime, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau turned around and bought the pipeline. Um, you know, which we now know has cost uh, taxpayers an upwards of $12 billion of taxpayers' money during a time of economic recession, um, pandemic, and, 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 you know, of course, juxtaposed against the backdrop of the global climate crisis. Um, and so, you know, um, the fight wages on, and, uh, you know, here we are uh, with construction beginning, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, the fight's not over yet. Um, and, you know, and so a lot of the work that I do with 350.org is in supporting uh, group, frontline groups, frontline partners, Indigenous peoples, grassroots communities and leaders um, in this mega, mega, mega fight um, against the Canadian settler colonial state and its economic apparatus that's trying to push this, this project as something the Canadian climate crisis when we all know that if TMX is built, it'll make it virtually impossible for Canada to uh, meet its, its uh, Paris Climate Accord targets, let alone um, the rhetoric and around reconciliation that Canada continues to provide um, to Indigenous peoples who are resistant uh, against the encroachment of projects that'll make them choose between, you know, sacred water um, and, 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 of course, um, you know, the, the food security that, that we have through our worldview and uh, relationship to the land um, where Creator put us, and so, you know, it's it's a it's 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 a big task, and a big part of that task is focused on you know ushering in, um, you know, create you know creating strategies and tactics that impact the government, um, that impact Canadians at large who vote for the government, um, you know, to push for a massive, massive intervention, um, you know, uh, economic transformation. Uh, you know, some people are referring to that as the Green New Deal. Um, and there's great debate around that. Um, you know, the way I like to describe it is what we're working towards is, is, is a massive economic transformation away from a grossly distorted and broken economic system that we all call capitalism towards something that you know, leaves no worker behind that is in full partnership with Indigenous peoples uh, living, uh, you know, under the occupation of the settler colonial state of Canada. Um, and, 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 and that creates millions and millions of jobs to get this settler colonial state off of an unsustainable carbon intensive economy to something that, um, you know, allows us to meet uh, and surpass our commitments to the Paris Climate Accord. Um, you know, and that transitions uh, us off of the fossil fuel um, dependency that, that we and others across Mother Earth have been locked into by the most powerful and let's just say it, evil corporate entities that have ever existed. So yeah, it's a big task, <laughs> but we're very, uh, we're very humbled and, and, and it's a pretty diverse movement ecosystem that 350.org and you know, my, my fellow teammates um, and, and you know, all the organizations are working with. And, and um, you know, one thing that I'm very certain about is that there in 40 years of environmentalism in this country, there has not been major environmental victories without Indigenous nations like the Tsleil-Waututh stepping up um, and leading the charge through an Indigenous rights-based framework. Um, supported by strategies that other social movements utilize, and of course, resources from um, those uh, uh, who have resources to sustain uh, this type of work. Um, and, you know, whether it's the James Bay Dam fights of the, uh, you know, early, early 80s, the Mackenzie Valley gas line pipeline fight of the 70s, um, you know, the big forestry battles uh, uh, in the 90s, um, you know, Oka, Gustafsson Lake, some of the biggest, uh, most pointed battles to protect the environment and the rights of human beings have always been led by Canada's Indigenous peoples, even within the crushing pressure of systemic racism. Um, you know, our people continue um, to show, um, you know, our love um, for the land and, 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 
and and for our fellow humankind so that's a little bit i guess kind of a rambly opening of what i do <laughs> no that's great yeah that's great and then and then you, you just just in the short history that we worked together in in the last 10 years in embridge um keystone the stand and rock and faith spotted eagle and what they're doing embridge mm -hmm. winona leduc and, and energy east um Serge Simon and Derek Nipponak and all the great work that you guys did back that way. But it was it was neat because you, you were a part of all of that. You came in, you helped <laughs> with all those things. And 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 I know that at times we relied on your your experience because when we started, we're like, we need an MC. And we're like, well, there's Clayton. <laughs> and you and, and it's good because you're versed in that. And um, so we really appreciated that. But what what got you started? You know, I I know there with with, I heard a lot of different things about our, our cultural and our spiritual ways or Cedar will say, I will not be a part of the generation that, that doesn't stop fighting. And what, what got you going? Well, you know, that, that's, that's a, there's, there's a few things. I mean, you know, I think, I think at a very deep subliminal level, like a, like a subconscious, like mind level and a kind of a spiritual level, like a dream level, um, you know, in the 80s, my parents were part of a big exodus of folks from the prairies that went west looking for better job opportunities. And so my mom and my dad, my adopted German father, got jobs in Terrace, BC, in the Skeena Valley. Um, and so I spent my teenage years, uh, you know, it was kind of a redneck racist town. And <clears throat> I was this really tall, slim, cute Cree guy from Winnipeg. And so if I wasn't fighting the like redneck teenage boys, I was fighting the Nishka and Shimshian boys, you know, because I <laughs> couldn't fit in. Um, so I spent a lot of time by myself with my 180 pound St. Bernard, um, just hiking up the tributaries and creeks of the Skeena River Valley and, and fishing for the cutthroat and steelhead and, and Dolly Varden. And, and uh, of course, you know, all the different salmon runs from from the sockeye to the pinks to the cohos, you know, and of course the kings and, you know, come first in the spring and just, just really, uh, you know, the, and of course the Ooligan run, you know, for natives who grew up in BC, you know, how sacred and valuable that Ooligan grease is and how powerful of a medicine it is. And yeah, so, you know, I grew, I spent my formative teenage years um, just spending time in that, in there. And then I think that planted a seed in me because years later, you know, that was our first big, big pipeline fight was supporting, um, you know, what Suetan and, 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 and many nations within that, uh, that, that highway of tears corridor, you know, um, to stop the Enbridge gateway pipeline. And, uh, you know, that victory was won uh, by the nations of that territory. And that was the first big tar sands pipeline that we smoked. And, uh, and, you know, and I think, what is it now? Keystone XL, Energy East, uh, Gateway, and uh, yeah, TMX coming for you next, you know? And so it's just a matter of time. But I think that, you know, that coupled with, um, as, a, as a, in my, in my um, early 20s and late teenage years, I had managed to transition out of working for my brothers who were the, you know, they founded the largest native gang in the country called the Manitoba Warriors. And so, you know, my first real job was, was, you know, running a drug house for my brothers. And um, I managed to get out of that lifestyle, you know, as a teenager and get myself into some incredible um, programs in the, in the inner city here in Winnipeg um, and get trained on how to do community development and like gang intervention work. And so a lot of my work in my early, early years as an organizer was in working with young indigenous peoples to get them out of gangs and uh, you know provide them with uh, opportunities for cultural pathways to decolonize their hearts, minds, and spirits, and to get involved in the movement. And uh, you know that was a, a lot of work through the Native Youth Movement, um, which was very active in the '90s, and which was one of the big things that inspired me. And one of the things I realized with all these young people that you know were you know young indigenous peoples that were ending up incarcerated or you know, in the psych ward or, you know, or, you know, whatever, dropped out of high school. Um, um, a lot of them all had the same question that I had, which is like, why is it so fucked up in our homelands? Um, you know, why do we have to have the hardest time in the places that are our, our lands? You know, this is where we come from and everybody else is a guest here, you know? And every pathway that I, or every story, origin story of every person I talked to always led to some 
mega, you know, mega extractive industry, whether it's a hydroelectric project or mega mining or clear cut forestry or, um, you know, the tar sands, um, it all, it all, it all led to, um, you know, indigenous peoples being deep dispossessed from their homelands, um, you know, forced into urban environments and, um, and, um, you know, and that had catastrophic, you know, and continues to have catastrophic, catastrophic impacts on, on, in particular, our young people and women, uh, indigenous women. And, um, you know, and all of this stuff um, is tied to extractive industries in Canada's entire economic model, which is fundamentally dependent on suppressing indigenous people's collective rights, the title that, that we have uh, to the land, our treaty rights, um, you know, if, if, if those things were to be respected and reconciliation was something real in the hearts and minds of the government, regardless of political stripe, um, the Canadian economy would collapse as it currently exists. Um, and so, you know, that's why Canada spends so many millions of dollars on fighting us at every step of the way. You know, Ruben talked about at the beginning of the podcast, the delays on not just justice, but even on like economic self-determination, you know, our nations try to make, create farms. They want to get financing for, you know, renewable energy development. You know, indigenous peoples are leading in this country on, on, on wind and solar uh, development. And uh, that could be even greater and create even more jobs if there weren't so many um, uh, wrenches thrown in the, the cogs of uh, economic sovereignty of indigenous peoples in this country, because they want us to be locked into the extractive industries. They want us to be so-called uh, uh, partners and, you know, not even partners. They wanna give us impact benefit sharing agreement uh, uh, payments, you know, um, it's insulting. And, um, and it's not real solutions to, no. you know, where we need to go um, as far as, um, you know, a lot of the old school chiefs that I grew up learning from, chiefs like Phil Fontaine, uh, Ovid McCurdy, Matthew Kuhncombe, <laughs> You know, these, these chiefs all said the same thing, you know, and I believe them. They say economic self-sufficiency is the pathway to self-determination. Um, however, I think that, you know, now that the new generation is coming up, um, we realize that that's true, but we don't have to do just oil and gas or, you know, like be locked into the mining economy, the extractive economy. We can build economies in a way that, 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 that is concrete, solid, established within our world and cosmo vision, you know, and our, and our responsibilities to those that cannot speak for themselves. So. Yeah, I totally hear you. You know, and even we're not treaty nation, but based, based on the land where people live on in Canada, there's agreements that were put in place for, for all indigenous across, across the country. And even those agreements that they, they agreed to, they can't keep, they can't, they can't live up to medical, dental, education, it's brutal. Mm -hmm. And then I hear you talking about green energy. Tisleywich is a nation where, where the biggest um, green solar panel um, nation um, in, in, in lo the lower mainland. We have the biggest farm in the lower mainland. So we, I totally hear you. Then I hear you too on, on, on the ways that are best to move forward. I don't remember, I think it's about eight years ago, Unifor, the biggest union in Alberta, Tarsan said, we want green energy jobs. We want sustainable jobs that, that will, you know, create a future for our future generations. And it's, and it's sickening when you, I agree with you too, when it comes to economic development, you know, we, we put in a bid to develop some of our land to pull, pull our nation forward a little bit economically. It was, it was, mm -hmm. it was no more than 150 units that we were, we put in a bid for, and they said no, but they mm -hmm. approved one, not even five miles down the street, 250 units. Not even mm -hmm. five minutes. So it's it, these roadblocks are consistently, constantly coming up, and and I agree too because you you look at my cousin who did thirty years for break and enter, mm -hmm. and the court system screwed, like the Ministry of Children Family screwed, but the things things are changing, things are changing. What are some positive th things that you see, of 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 our nation's creating change for our lands and waters and people? Talked about some of the victories, but. You know, maybe it's education of some of our young people. You talked about your kids getting good mm -hmm. grades and going to school and, you know, get, yeah. nations getting into business. What, what, what are the positive things that you see moving forward? 
Well, you know, I, I think first and foremost, um, the emergence of Indigenous climate action in recent years, it's a uh, Canada's only climate justice, Indigenous rights organization. It's predominantly run by Indigenous women um, uh, under the leadership of Ariel Duranger, who comes from uh, Athabasca Chippewan First Nation, which is 150 kilometers downstream from Canada's tar sands and, you know, has paid a very high cost um, for the, 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 you know, hundreds of billions of dollars of resources that Canada has made uh, destroying their territory, um, you know, for these bitumen uh, sands that they mine from underneath the Boreal uh, uh, Forest, which is one of the most important carbon sinks on the planet when we think about climate change. And, um, you know, and, 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 you know, her nation uh, has, uh, I think, the largest solar installation now in Alberta, um, you know, and I mean, their nation is, is like all First Nations in Alberta, um, inextricably linked to the fossil fuel sector have been locked under their oppression and into working with them for decades. Um, but even under that incredible pressure, um, they were the first First Nation to own a gold lead certified uh, uh, office building in, in Oil Central Fort Mac. Um, and now they have this solar project um, that's powering their nation. Um, right there in the midst of the tar sands, um, you know, and another staffer with, with Indigenous Climate Action is Melina Lubacan Massimo, who launched her own solar company, uh, Sacred Solar, um, um, which built, uh, you know, another, I think, one of the other biggest uh, solar installations in Lubacan Cree Nation, um, which powers the community's um, health and elder center. Um, here in Manitoba, there's Chief Dave Crate from Fisher River First Nation. Uh, who's built, I think, the largest solar array here in the province of Manitoba. And 186 of their buildings, including many of their houses, run on geothermal energy, um, you know, which is another, another option that is not often talked about, but Canada is a geothermal energy, like, superpower on the planet. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's just so much leadership across the country of Indigenous peoples taking the right step. And I think the other really hopeful thing that, that I'm witnessing at this moment is the synergies between social movements and in particular, um, you know, children. Uh, last year, September 27th, you know, a million kids hit the streets across Canada as part of climate strikes. And even my own sons, my oldest boy was part of the first climate strike protest here in, in Winnipeg. It was about 13 kids from his school went and protested uh, uh, ministry. Carr's office uh, on Corden Avenue here in Winnipeg and, uh, you know, over, over the TMX and, uh, you know, and it was the climate strike thing. And then, you know, fast forward a few months later and there's 20,000 kids, including my sons uh, who were on the stage with me. I gave a speech to all those children that day. Um, and it was just the most empowering thing I've ever seen. Like little, there were kids so small, they had to like, like kind of like shimmy off the, the step of the bus because they were like little grade tours and three little tiny kids with signs. And it inspired me because, you know, when we look back at civil rights history, you know, it's, it's, it's always the same story, you know, um, you know, cops bust heads until the children come to the front lines, you know, and you saw that in, in Selma, Alabama. Um, you know, with, with Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, got his ass smoked. I don't know how many times and all those elders leading back then got beat up by the cops. But those northern, you know, white liberal uh, people in the United States couldn't tolerate seeing little black kids get their heads knocked by the police and things began to change. And so, you know, when I, when I look at how many Indigenous young people like Autumn Pelche and you know, there's, there's, there's hundreds of them, you know, Taikaya Blaney and all those young people that have been raised in hell, um, you know, in Vancouver and in Victoria at the, at the legislature protesting uh, Kinder Morgan, you know, targeting the insurance companies, um, you know, um, they're, they're really having a great impact and, uh, and they have very strong fire burning inside of them, you know, and so, uh, you know, it feels like a shift in the Overton window of what's possible is right before us. And, and I think that, you know, to quote you, Ruben, uh, the big challenge we have is that people don't always get along and they don't always agree with each other. But uh, one thing that I, that I stole from Ruben, whenever I'm helping uh, with conflict resolutions between different social movements or different generations is that 
look, let's just slow down. We're all headed in the same direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, so this is Truth, Family, Health, and Culture. Um, Kose Elish Law, our guest is Clayton Thomas Mueller, um, a longtime activist. Um, going back to the Red Wire days in Vancouver, I believe. And so I'm um, happy to have you here. I think now we could, um, I'm gonna ask another one more question, but I just want you guys to know here, if you have any questions that you can post them in the, um, in the chat for Clayton. I think we'll leave a little bit time for some some questions. What what are the most impacting and significant moments? You know, I I think you were there in D.C. with 350 when when um when um, um Bill McGibbon and you mentioned Ariel. She's going to be on the show. It's a lot of people, as you know, they're going to be on the show. But Bill, they 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 surrounded the the White House. You you mm -hmm. were there, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. What, what are some of the bigger things that that just you felt and gave you strength because what I do admire about you is your longevity. Yeah. 20 years is a long time. Uh, how many colleagues are still working or even for that matter alive when you started? Because from the very first meeting, Kinder Morgan, I'm the only one. I'm mm -hmm. the only one from the very first meeting. There's like 20 of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Ben West and Rex, Rex Weiler, founder of Greenpeace and a whole bunch of others. They come in and help here and there, but not consistent like how it used to be. So what is the biggest most well i you know I, I want to preface by saying that like i just i just overcame my i think six career burnout and um you know i think that we need to unglamorize overworking even in movements you know i come out of that american indian movement era you know all my aunties and uncles were aim and you know they they had to you know, like suffer, and I don't know, like, like, they're really like, go, go, go 18 hour days, you know, we got to make these pamphlets, we're gonna paint that banner, then we got to write this statement, then we're gonna, it's all gotta be done today, you know, just like, unsustainable. And, uh, you know, no human being can do that. And thank God we had our aunties and uncles and thank God they were as tough as they were, so that we could be here right now talking about burnout and how, uh, you know, untalk or how unsustainable, you know, the way that we organize, uh, you know, can be, and that there are ways to do things where you do less work, but the impact is far greater. Um, and so I've learned that over the years. Um, but I will say, you know, um, you know, when it comes to the fight to stop the expansion of the tar sands and its associated pipelines, for me, a big deal was, you know, uh, just a small handful of, of women from uh, Fort, Fort, uh, Fort Chippewan uh, Errol Duranger's family, you know, we were, we met and, and, you know, they came to a protecting mother earth conference and, and, um, you know, they said, you got to come up to the tar sands. We hear, you know, we know that all these, these fights are, are really hard, but the tar sands is the biggest energy project, the construction project in the history of mankind. You know, they move more earth in the tar sands to date than the Suez Canal, the pyramids of Giza, the Great Wall of China, and the world's 10 largest uh, earth-laden hydroelectric dams combined. Um, you know, they move enough earth every day from underneath the boreal forest in the tar sands to fill the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, you know, Sky Dome in Toronto. Um, and it's, 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 some, it's very humbling to see it, you know, and, and you, when you see it and you freak out about what you're seeing it's like a science fiction horror movie eh you can see it from outer space it's so big um you know and native people are living in the midst of that and they're hunting and, and their ability to, to to have safe water to drink it's all been destroyed and for who knows how long um and so you know um for me when we first when we first figured out that a strategy to to keep tar sands um small and not open to big international markets um, because Canada made a mistake. Eh? They built all their pipelines to the United States. And, and that was a big, you know, strategy mistake for the capitalist greedy buggers that, you know, want to do these types of things to mother earth and her people. Um, it gave us a, an opportunity to look at all the proposed pipelines. And these were organizing corridors that we could start talking to landowners and indigenous nations, you know, native American tribes and, First Nations alike, <clears throat> and and build alliances. And so, you know, I was a part of the first Keystone campaign, and you know, we got our butts kicked on that campaign, but we got a bunch of media, 
And so, you know, all the white funders were like, Ooh, that's kind of interesting. And so, you know, they asked me to write a strategy paper on why pipelines, uh, you know, pipeline campaigns were the key to keeping the Alberta tar sands landlocked. And, you know, so I, I did that, you know, in collaboration with, with community leaders and it began a whole era of mega pipeline fights that, you know, I think have become some of the most iconic and inspiring fights um, you know, that, that inspire people to become activated on the issue of the intersectionality between climate and, and, and human rights and indigenous rights. And, um, you know, I mean, like all this organizing led to, to, you know, the biggest gathering of indigenous peoples since pre-colonial times, you know, Standing Rock. And, um, you know, all these pipeline fights are connected, you know, Standing Rock is everywhere. And so, you know, um, when we won, uh, you know, the, the Keystone XL pipeline under President Obama, that was a big deal because I was literally camped out in front of newly elected Prime Minister Trudeau's house in Ottawa with about 50 young people deliver, trying to deliver them six solar panels for the uh, for uh, 24 Sussex, our version of the White House here in Canada. I was there. No, yeah, because there's no freaking solar panels on that. Like, what the hell? <laughs> and um and I got a call from Democracy Now! right on the second day of that protest. And it was pissing rain. And we were just like, damn, this sucks. It's so cold here. Oh. Um, but we were, we were, you know, we were locked down, blocking the streets and singing songs. And it, it was pretty inspiring. And then we get this call from Democracy Now! And they're like, President Obama just rejected the Keystone XL pipeline or, or some shit like that. And, and it was, or maybe, was that? I don't know. I, I get them all confused, but it was a, it was a crazy moment. I'm like live streaming to democracy now while supporting these these young students, um, you know, to deliver these solar panels to, to Prime Minister Trudeau. And, you know, there's a lot of moments like that, that that were very powerful. I think another moment for me that was very powerful was when, you know, in your territory, Ruben, uh, to be a part of the water flotilla action, you know, I, I I'm not a good kayaker, but I got in a kayak and I went out there and uh, counted coup on 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 the mega. Uh, um, they had this huge crane on a, on a barge and they're building this this like 12 foot barbed wire fence right through the sacred inlet around Kinder Morgan's tanker facility. And, um, you know, we went out there and we, we prayed and we touched that barge and we counted coup on 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 Trudeau and on Kinder Morgan and, you know, and let them know, like, you can put up these fences, you can do anything, but it won't stop the power of our prayers. It won't stop the power of our ancestors. And uh, that was pretty freaking exhilarating. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh my God, I was live streaming from the kayak and I was dropped my phone in the ocean. And <laughs> it was really, really cool, you know, but uh, I think, I think the most exciting thing throughout every experience has been to see, um, you know, young people, especially, but communities like, like get, get agency over their rights and, and the fight ahead of them and, 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 and remember that they're never alone. And to see that, you know, time after time after time, like straight up ancestors behind like community, grassroots community leaders, like you just feel when the ancestors put their hands on their shoulders, and then they you know, they stand up and you hear the ancestors speak through them. And I've seen that, you know, hundreds of times over the years. And, you know, and I always get a big smile. I think that's the most rewarding thing when you see our ancestors at work through our people and, and, and the power of faith, you know, um, you know, it, it wins every time. So, yeah. And maybe not when you think, when you, when you want it to win, but it, it always wins, like, you know, the power of prayer and tobacco and you know all of the tools that we're given you know so yeah i, I like the the fertility we, we we will do that again we will mm -hmm. bring you in in the sacred trust and you know um it's, it's 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 um i believe in that that ceremony is everything that we get out of the water is good we we, we knew all along but we did studies to prove it that 80 percent of our traditional diet came out of the water where you were in the kayak and um so everything we get out of there is good. And it's our mother. Just lay with with me means the people, that water right there that you're sitting in in your kayak. So um, we do everything to make sure that the only thing going back in the water should be good too, since the only thing we yeah. get out. And that's what we put down that that medicine along along there. So uh, we, we want to do that again. We will. We will. We want to do the sacred fire. 
you know, just before COVID hit, we had another big march planned. You know, when we had 10,000 people come up, we were going to plan something similar with all of our allies. And now, now we're, what's, what's a shame is you, you see the restrictions that, that COVID puts on, rightfully so, because, you know, we have to be careful and protect the people we love, but not for that industry. Mm -hmm. They're, they're full on working and getting reports all along the pipeline. You know, my members are so disheartened because they, they hear the pounding of the, of the, of the, of the big, huge machines that are putting in posts for the, for the dock. It's going out one third of the distance across the inlet. That's how big it is. Mm -hmm. And these ships are huge. And so, you know, they're not stopping working. And, you know, in, in ways we're trying not to, you know, we, you know, we're looking at court, we're looking at United Nations. And then of course, this is part of it, bringing in people on like you to explain, but what more could we do to support 350.org or Bioneers or any of the other organizations that you work with? What, 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 what more could the people do that are listening? Well, I think I think like like you know I want to I want to use this opportunity to call out Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, you know, and his, and his government. I mean, you know, like like it's just all they continue to do is is to look for some kind of like non-existent middle ground, um, you know, between people who want to do nothing to tackle the climate crisis and scientists saying that we need big radical transformation, uh, and we got to land a plan that's 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 you know that that's up to the scale that this current crisis demands you know and, and and this government is just not is not doing that and what's even more horrible about it is we gotta we gotta call out the national corporate media like cbc and ctv because you know for some strange reason trudeau continues to uh um you know have this like perfect recipe for an almost 75 percent approval rating on climate um, you know, Canadians, for some reason, think that this guy is, is a real climate leader, you know, when the reality of it is, is that after declaring a climate crisis, he turned around and bought a pipeline that if built will make it impossible for Canada to meet any kind of commitments, even uh, the weak commitments that the Paris Accord lays out under this ridiculous uh, zero carbon uh, uh, um, <clears throat> or, or uh, carbon zero regime, which is just code for you know, accounting scams and carbon trading and the privatization of forests and carbon sinks through, uh, you know, uh, uh, the world carbon trading facility. And so, you know, <clears throat> we've got a, we've got, you know, time now, um, you know, to, well, little time now to focus because we have an impending federal election that's about to happen, you know, and there has been some discourse on, you know, what it's going to take uh, to break this, like, this like this trick that the liberal media machinery has tricked the Canadian corporate media into believing, which is that, you know, this next election is about their middle of the ground, totally inaccurate response to climate change. They haven't done enough to the climate denialism of the conservatives when that's just not even a reality of the current discourse, especially when you look at what Biden's doing in the United States and, uh, you know, the, the trillion, you know, tr $3 trillion budget they announced with a lot of that going into pretty, you know, by the U.S.'s standards, revolutionary uh, climate adaptation funds, including funds for environmental justice and communities, um, you know, that are living uh, and impact the most by, by um, the transition off of the fossil fuel economy. And so, you know, a lot, a lot of people have been talking that, you know, if an alliance would, to, would be to emerge before the election between the Greens and the NDP, um, that that would benefit both parties um, in a way that, you know, they would come out of this with more seats. Um, but, you know, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of humility, I think, in Canada's political spectrum um, to see some kind of revolutionary approach like a NDP and Greens Climate Emergency Alliance. Um, and, you know, and, and I think that that's the kind of thing, though, that's going to like break this, this, this kind of revolving door between the corporate media just spewing out liberal speaking notes, the liberals rep repetitive message that this is about the conservatives and them. You know, if the NDP and the Greens were to align and social movements like Fridays for Future and climate strikers and, and others uh, were to support that, then I could think that we would see the kind of real climate leaders in the legislature that will actually start acting on the demands of social movements like the million um, you know, future voters that marched last September 27th. And so, yeah, I mean, aside from that, you know, I think that 
at, a, at the local level, you know, we see young people, um, you know, uh, you know, all the way up to elders, you know, taking action on resisting extractive industries, not just the oil and gas sector and unconventional sector like the tar sands, but mining, you know, we have a Canada is home to 87% of the mining companies around the world and, you know, Canada you know, continues to to export its own brand of imperialism and colonialism through um, mining. Um, you know, and 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 the export of shitty technology um, to countries in the global south. You know, for economic development. Um, and I think that you know we've got a we've got to really challenge. Um, you know, these 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 governments, these decision makers, force them into decision dilemmas, um, and and usher in you know, this new economic paradigm, a Green New Deal, some call it, um, but call it whatever you want. You know, we are living in a moment where we, we have a, an opportunity with this triple threat, you know, this, this, this COVID pandemic, this economic recession, um, and, the, and the global climate crisis to build, you know, a, 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 an economic uh, solution that is holistic in design, bioregional in design, that is, uh, you know, justice, in its foundation, um, you know, that creates millions of jobs, that leaves no worker behind, that is in full partnership with Indigenous peoples and respects the United Nations um, um, Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and all of the other legal frameworks that defend our inherent rights. Exactly. You know, that's that's good. It, it's, it's it's like to slow it to what I started with. And, and if, if anyone has a question, Christine, we're able to unmute people if they have a question. So maybe you could put a little hand emoji up if you have a question for Clayton. Um, but I, I hear you, and it's 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 even Blackwell was the, one of the biggest media owners in, in Canada proposed the pipeline. So we know they're who they're in bed with. Even even our our Facebook posts are 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 monitored, and and you know I. I could do a goofy picture of what I ate and get hundreds of views and put something up pretty important that I think people would really want to know and it won't make any traction. And but it, you know, it's it's it is what it is, and and um, it's it's a difficult struggle. And but you know, in the 10, eleven years we've been doing this, no pipeline has been built in our territory, and in that that you know we we stalled it this long and we won't stop until we really make sure that it's. It's done. It's thankful for people like you that, you know, come and be our allies and help bring us together right, right across our country. And um, so any questions from anybody? So Clayton, um, really appreciate all, yeah, all, what you do, all what you do. Really appreciate um, everybody for tuning in. Um, it's it's good to see you and and you know with with this covid you know I, as soon as it's done we have a lot of work to do we have, we have and good food to eat <laughs> yeah. i'll get you some salmon <laughs> hey if it's done yeah, by I'll, summer I'll that engine is crab never mind <laughs> <laughs> you know, crab okay <laughs> you crab can you describe those rainbow trout that do that run um down the down the arm uh, oh you yeah. mentioned the secret and, spot so and, and lilouette I definitely yeah. want to try that. <laughs> we were walking there, and the and the warden said, "Don't don't step on the trout." And we're like, "What? <laughs> don't step on the trout?" And I was like, "Whatever." So <laughs> I walked over, and the creek was only this deep, and there's thousands and thousands of trout. Yeah. I was like a little kid. I jumped in there and I scooped about four of them up on shore and took them back to camp and cooked them up. And I was in heaven, and we're we were just frolicking around like kids. But That's there's another place too. Another place I want to take you if you come in the summer, if, if we're able to, it's um I, I it's my favorite place in the world. It's I, I we could it's funny I, I snorkel and I, I spear fish with a spear gun. We'll take mm -hmm. your boys out and I, I got extra stuff and it's oh that'll be good. It's, it's well COVID willing. I hope to come see uh take my boys up to the Skeena Valley for the first time and then come spend time in the Lower Mainland if it if it works out like to drive and camp. Um, so I'll keep you abreast of that, but I wanted to say a few words to those that are still tuned in or that are watching the recording. Sure. Um, you know, I really want to encourage, uh, just do a couple call outs, you know, Ruben had mentioned the Bioneers. I've been a board member of the Bioneers for 
decade plus and uh, you know grew up in that community. It's the largest environmental conference in the United States and um, you know just a really incredible and powerful community um, of influencers. So please check them out, bioneers.org. They've got incredible, incredible digital content of social movement leaders from every sector from the last 30 years speaking at our conference, including many of the guests that Ruben has um, you know, on future podcasts uh, with Sacred Ecology. So check that out. Um, also what Indigenous Climate Action. I'm sorry, uh, well, this year, uh, this year, we're, you know, it's always in October, but this year, last year, of course, we canceled. Uh, we canceled again this year, but we are delivering a digital program. So the conference is, you know, online, um, like like many other uh, uh, events and, and gatherings. Um, we're going to do that again this year. And our next in-person conference will be in early 2022 uh, in the Bay Area. So you'll be able to catch up. But we've got lots of online cool stuff, especially educators check out bioneers.org. We've got really amazing things for tools for you to use with your students. And, um, you know, I wanted to shout out Indigenous Climate Action. Uh, they're just an incredible environmental justice, climate justice organization um, here in Canada and uh, in these lands that they call Canada. Uh, find ways to support their work. Um, and I also wanted to mention, um, you know, I'm a filmmaker as, as well, and uh, you can catch my film. It's a uh, biopic, uh, short documentary. Um, on uh, CBC Gem, the streaming platform. It's called Life in the City of Dirty Water. And it's part of a larger three-dimensional transmedia storytelling universe about the life I've lived so far. Um, and, uh, you know, it, the whole universe goes live in September when um, my autobiography drops uh, in the United States and in, in, here in, Ca in Canada uh, through Penguin Publishing. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, you can follow... Uh, the trajectory of the storytelling project at life in the city of dirty and you know Winnipeg the city I live in uh, translated in my language means muddy or murky water so it's a literal translation of you know the city that I grew up in and it's a collection of, of observations and stories um, of 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 uh, what it what it's like to be indigenous and grow up in one of Canada's inner city and and the whole idea basically is to create a conversation about what's it actually going to take uh, to heal our, our Indigenous peoples, especially Indigenous men, um, from the violence of colonialism, you know, so that we can move forward in a, in a really healthy way that, that uh, you know, lifts up and heals our families and, and our nations. So, so, yeah. All right, brother. <clears throat> Thank you for all the, all the good work. I'm looking forward to your book coming up. Um, looking forward to seeing your film and then as soon as this is all done i really look forward to seeing you and your boys and if you need any hookups if you're going to go past skiing up to nishka territory let me know i got a good bro up there that could take you out and hunting fishing or whatever you want to do some dip dip net yeah they oh, got yeah. that they got that big gorge there where the, they catch up with those 30 long dip nets eh? yeah yeah he, he, he halibut too he goes out for halibut oh wow I love halibut. <laughs> and, the, and the um sea line. Can you imagine? Sea line. But anyway. Yeah, it's like it's like fishy beef. It's really red. Um, yeah, but it's like yeah. super fishy. It's kind of well, if you're not used to it, it's, it can be a little intense at first. Yeah. I've eaten a lot of seal. <laughs> They're massive too. They they brought one in, I think, yesterday, my bro. And um, oh, yeah. they, they divided up the whole community and they're really rich up there and living really strong with within or cult cultural way still it's so beautiful and maybe i'll meet you up there <laughs> yeah it's real sacred too up there you know like for those that red sweats up there they you know they they use uh i've seen them use the the lava rocks up there although i know there's big debate over whether or not to use them i'm not trying to get into that debate but mm -hmm. i remember that going to sweat lodges up in that region and they have volcanoes up there so their their sweat rocks would still be red when you're getting out of the sweat because that's how much that lava rock retains the heat <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah so okay brother okay. really good to see you really 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 good to see you i love you lots man and, oh i love you know, too man <laughs> i miss you <laughs> i miss you too but i think there's some work we could do around um Trudeau going to United Nations, and I think Tislautu wants to be involved in, in finding out. Oh yeah, what's going on with that, and I think Russell Diablo was helping us a little bit. But I know there's. All oh, right, on Russ is good people. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the guests soon too. Oh, right on. So, Good. That's awesome. Any last thoughts from Peter or Christine? Yeah. Um, one person on Facebook is interested to hear about your guys' thoughts on the tree sits that are happening in Burnaby. Mm. My family's been going there and they've been singing for them and they've been supporting them. I think one, one of the guys is, is, is a professor. You know, he is a professor at SFU and my daughter's been heading up there. They, and some of the group that are here, they've been going and doing pipe ceremonies pretty close to where he is. Um, a lot of my family has been going in and singing him and, you know, it, it's multiple days and I think close to six weeks or longer maybe that he's been up there. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's, we have to come from all angles. We have to, and and um, I, I support them. And we're all like this. Lee, which says we're going in the same direction. Support one another. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that. I, but Clayton, you want to mention any? Yeah. Um, well, you know, um, first off, you know, I, I, you know, I take my hat and raise my hands up to the brave people that are taking such incredible risk uh, to be doing this direct action right now. Um, at, you know, I think it's important important for the viewers uh, to know how severe uh, the consequences are of doing nonviolent direct action on any site that is deemed a Kinder Morgan work site in the entire jurisdiction of so-called British Columbia. Um, you know, it's an instant 90 days incarceration, um, plus up to, you know, I think $5,000 fine. Um, so it's very significant, you know, if, if people are going to be doing these types of actions that they have um, you know, an infrastructure built around you, um, you know, that you have a concrete legal defense strategy, like plan, like, um, you know, um, but they've been pretty straight up and, you know, and I, I think my message to especially the non-native people watching this podcast is, you know, especially the retirees, um, you know, you're the ones who should be going and getting arrested, not these young native kids, like who haven't even started their academic career yet, or, you know, these, these really young, you know, any young people that hasn't even gone to school, like university yet going and getting arrested and thrown in jail. Like, I think there's a better way to organize ourselves. And I want to make sure and just say that I support all forms of, of action, you know, for sure. And, you know, and diversity of tactics, but what I don't support is, is young native is especially going to jail um, for these, these brave causes, you know, these, these moral causes, um, and it not being in the media and it, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and them paying a very, very heavy price for the rest of their lives when people with privilege and with the time on their hands um, can step in and do that. You know, we've got to start organizing strategies and stop putting our indigenous leaders, especially young, young people and women at the front line when we have other people that we can put forward that can take that risk. Um, and that can afford, um, you know, that kind of impact, you know, a lot of these people have children, even the young ones. And, you know, um, there's some some really powerful movement leaders right now in this TMX fight that are facing real jail time that have families. And, uh, you know, we've got to try and turn that dynamic around and all of us have to pull together and, you know, put our hearts, minds and spirits together in this fight um, and, and, and make sure that the ones that are taking the risk that these tree sitters are taking, that they're well taken care of um, and that we have, you know, the funding uh, to pay for the legal defense um, and that we can support them, you know, with, with, with externalized costs like childcare and whatnot, because these people pay a high price, you know, they really do. Yeah. Yeah. The we, only just had, we just had, I'm oh, sorry. We just had two, two members um, that are in the Facebook that um, did a, Cynthia and Mariel just did a, a fast up there, a four day fast, a prayer to protect in that mountain and personal prayers too. Uh, Peter, you're gonna say something. Yeah, the only thing I'd add, um, you know, those tree sitters have been there uh, except for a period of a couple of weeks when they were removed since August of last year. Um, and, you know, folks have been holding it down for a really long time up there. So uh, I didn't mention them on my, in my intro, but uh, it's because I know that they're going to be there next week, too. So there's so much going on on this fight. There's people tree sitting of a, over uh, Holmes and Lost Creek. You know, there's people um, holding it down at, at the insurance company headquarters here in Vancouver, taking on, you know, to the point where Trans Mountain actually had to run and plead to the regulator to say, don't tell them who are 
is insuring this pipeline because it could shut the whole thing down. Um, so there, there's just so much going on. Uh, we couldn't possibly bring it all at once, but uh, you know, we'll be back every week to, to let you know what's happening. Yeah, just sorry, on that note too, uh, um, Peter, there's also an, the reemergence of a focus on the five Canadian major banks, which are some of the world's biggest investors in fossil fuels, especially tar sands, uh, most notably RBC. And so there is a big injection of resources and people power into targeting the banks again, you know, stop the money pipeline.org in the United States. Um, and here in Canada as well, there are groups that are organizing on the banks too, not just the insurance companies. So, you know, there does seem to be a, a, a resurgence of, of, of different strategies, a multi-pronged approach um, and another big battle that is about to go down. And uh, so, yeah, get involved, you know, find a pathway to, to, to be a part, you know, of the good fight, the right side of her story. And uh, yeah, we'll see you out on the streets and out on the lands. <laughs> Here I add to that too. Um, Sacred Trust working with allies in Vancouver um, are also going at the insurance companies, Eugene Kung and Charlene Alec and, and actually Kaya too, my daughter, and some people on here I bet are, are also involved in going after the insurance companies. Hopefully announcement will be made in the next little while of some, some more dropping out. So thank you for all the work and thank you Clayton and thank you for all the people that are tuning in from all over the place. Uh, we, got, we got over 40 sites and streams that are going out all over the world and Thank Clayton for breaking us in. All right. Admittedly, I, I'm never nervous doing these things. And Peter said that as well. We always do this, but the three of us were nervous and you made it really <laughs> easy for us, Clayton. You're, uh -huh. veteran at, well, you're a young guy, but you're a veteran in what you do. And we really, <laughs> really appreciate it. I don't know, man. I'm turning 44 in July. I'm, I'm not that young anymore, but yeah. Thank you for the kind <laughs> words. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we, we could um, end the recording and end the session. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Okay. Everybody can ask me now. How?